to admit it doesn't look quite right. Now, this is not some fringe new age fad. These people are deadly serious, parents with very firm ideas about how we should bring up our kids. Firstly, you have to be there, attached to your child, 24 hours a day. No school, no discipline, and definitely no cots, prams, dummies, or even nappies. They all break the mother-baby bond. And for some, breastfeeding on demand, regardless of age, is perfectly okay. Now, they're confident all this will produce independent, free-thinking kids. But ask their critics and they say, spoilt brats are more likely. Without wishing to put you off your dinner, it's lunchtime for the Cole family. It's difficult, isn't it? When it doesn't look like there's enough room on my knees for you to. And Liz doesn't just breastfeed her two-year-old Catherine. A movie? Mm-hmm. Is this just because you've been sitting watching Catherine have boobies? Yes. Put the idea into your head. Eleanor is also hungry. If you're thinking she's a little old to still be breastfeeding, well, she is five. She is able to have what should be every child's birthright, that they should be allowed to feed. It should be the norm that children feed up until the age of, say, five. You, can you wait just a second while Nora no! has hers? With three children, Liz Cole has been breastfeeding non-stop for seven years, wherever and whenever her children demand it. Have you had this one already? Yes, but I want it again. Two seconds. And then I've got to go and make some lunch. I do notice the fact that Liz has her tits out and it's very rarely for me these days. So I just try and stand in queue and pretend to be one of the girls, but she never gets fooled by that. The bits British couple me. Gary and Liz Cole are part of a growing worldwide movement. It's called attachment parenting. And they've given up their jobs, given up everything, to spend 24 hours a day with their children. Modern life is very adult focused and it's not child focused on the whole. And I think we are doing our children in this country certainly a lot of damage. Hey, now I'm some... Children are always seen as an accessory. You know, you have a couple of kids, a couple of Gucci handbags, and then people wonder why they have problems with their children. Dad, you forgot the room. You do have to be in touch with that child in order to parent it effectively. Attachment parenting is all about putting the child first, responding to its needs. And according to this controversial philosophy, all the child needs is you. Where to start? There are just so many things that if you're available to your child, they're not going to need these things. American devotee and mum to two, Krista Cornish Scott, condemns these mod cons as merely a mother substitute and a barrier to physical contact with your child. All of these little dummies, you know, it's replacing your breast. As for prams and bouncers, they're the ideal gift for the lazy parent. The good parent carries their child everywhere. Oh, these are my favorite. <laughs> we kind of call these neglectomatics. <laughs> so easy to just put the baby in one of those things and just forget about them. And cots aren't common sense, they're a curse. As far as I'm concerned, these are really just cages for babies. Little jail, I imagine them ringing their tin cup along the bars. <laughs> Let me out, please. I want to be next to my mom. Give a jail push in between. Following their philosophy, attachment parenting starts before their child is even born. According to Krista, one of the greatest threats to a child is medical intervention during pregnancy. So in her world, that means no ultrasound, no hospitals and no doctors. It goes without saying the birth should happen at home unless there's an emergency. It's interesting to me that veterinarians and zoologists understand exactly what happens if you interfere with the birth. If you have a bunch of observers sitting around watching an animal give birth, that mother may not give birth or it may be very difficult or she may do strange things afterwards like try to eat the baby or ignore the baby or do weird things. We're doing the same thing to women and that is having profound, profound effects. Should we put these ones away? Where does that one go? It goes on the floor. In Australia too, Oops. attachment parenting has many supporters. Sydney mum Janet Fraser runs the Home Birth Network and practices the techniques on three-year-old Connor and three-month-old Isabel. It's not that I'm raising a child and caretaking a future adult. So I raise my children 
with respect and with empathy that's appropriate to them as you know, their age and development stages continue. In this household, that means Connor tells mum when he wants to stop breastfeeding, which he did six months ago. He'd clearly developed other tools for dealing with, you know, emotional um, issues and he just didn't need the booby anymore, so he doesn't have the booby anymore. When do you think you'll stop having booby? Never. I just wonder, when you see, you know, five-year-olds, for instance, still breastfeeding, I wonder how much that, that is about the child and how much that is about the mum. Well, you can't force a child to breastfeed, can you? Trust me, having a five-year-old hanging off you is not something you do for your own pleasure. It's, it's, when people have this very warped idea about breastfeeding, just because it involves breasts doesn't mean it's an erotic activity. Well, I wasn't suggesting erotic. What I was suggesting was that perhaps mum doesn't want to see their baby grow into a child and she doesn't want that bond to be broken. Well, like I said, you can't force feed a child. You can't force them on the boob. So, no. No, it's a myth. <laughs> And the parenting philosophy extends to the bedroom. When it's time for Connor to go to sleep, his bed is the one he shares with his baby sister and mum. Dad is relegated to another room. It's called co-sleeping and it's a common tool of attachment parents. And how long do you expect that to go on for? Till the kids move out of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and when's that and they going no to longer be? need me. Are you going to give Horsey a cuddle? Some Horsey cuddle? No, I think he'd really like some privacy. Can we have some privacy? Would you ever make the decision for your children about when it's the right time to move into their own beds, into their own rooms? Well, that's like deciding for someone else that they're hungry. I can't do that. Well, excuse me for prying, but how do you make babies with this sort of arrangement? Do you only have sex in a bed? No, we have two adult beds going.